Hello and welcome fellow artists and friends. Today I'm testing out the Derwent Intense Paint Pen Set number one. So let's get started. Okay, so it says permanent when dry. Doesn't wash out like watercolor. So that ought to be great for layering. I'm really excited about this. I have watched a couple of videos on this. Um, Steve Mitchell from The Mind of Watercolor, um, Owen's Art, as well as Lindsay over at The Frugal Crafter. It piqued my interest, so let's have a look. Okay, looks a lot like the uh, other set that I have of the graph attempt same type of set comes with this little little card indicator which will be a help out but we will be swatching our own i like this derwent this is good when you package it like this nice packaging okay Holds everything in there nice. And here's our little sponge. And it comes with a little water brush, which is great for, see, like you fill this part up with water and then you put that on and use the little brush. Um, if you've not seen one of these before, they're handy, especially in a little travel kit. So let's see. Do these come out? These actually come out individually. So that's interesting. Oh, you can push these up. I don't know if you saw that on the back there, but you can. So that's really nice. If you just wanted one thing to take traveling with you, you could actually mix other sets with each other. I like that. All right. So let's get to swatching. Okay, here we go. So I'm just using a little flat brush. I need to practice more with my flat brushes. All right. So I've loaded up my brush. I'm bringing it down past my line there because I'm trying to check the transparency as I dilute it a little bit when I come down. Wow, this is pretty powerful stuff. All right. Yes. I am glad I chose that. Wow. Okay, that was sun yellow. Now we're going into mango. I'm interested to see how these layer when I do a artwork. I forgot to mention that I am working in my Pentallic Aqua Journal where I love to do my swatches and studies and whatever it is, whatever I feel like doing, right? That got a little bit of a hard line there. I don't want that line there. Okay, because once these dry, these are going to be permanent. A little bit scary. The next color is poppy red. Ooh, wow. Sure is a very red red. Wow. Okay. I should have waited for that one to dry. It happens. We can recover. Nothing has to be perfect. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I see you, Derwin. I'm liking it. We're going into our dark plum now. See, I think that one I got a little bit streaky, so maybe if I go a little bit more, because I think I just kind of uh, got nervous over here and just thought about it too much instead of just doing it. There we go. That's a little better. This is called Mid Ultramarine. I need to get a little bit more in there. I, I can already see that. I'm going to come back down. Ooh, that is a pretty ultramarine. Now let's go back in there. And... Ultramarine is one of those colors. I don't care what medium you're using. It's not the strongest all right so our next color is bright blue okay that's like a primary blue like a phthalo okay very nice Even that, as it gets thinner, almost like a cyan or cerulean. Yeah. Okay. I'm finding like on the purples and blues, I'm having to do more than one layer, but that could just be because I'm not used to this medium yet. All right, well, I'm not going to fuss too much. Okay, teal green. It's very pretty, like a viridian there. Very nice. Fire that up just a little bit. We have that. The lens out a little bit. Okay. Our next color is racing green. I was not expecting that, but my goodness, what a nice color. I'm very drawn to earthy colors and on this very nice. The next color is Kiwi. Doesn't that just sound good? Kiwi. Sounds refreshing. Ooh, it's like a very spring. Apple green. I like it. I like it. I can already tell that some colors are more transparent than others. The next color is burnt yellow ochre. ochre. Okay, 
So I really loaded up that brush. As you can see, I'm hoping that these are not going to be hard to blend. They're supposed to be permanent, so we'll find out. Natural brown. Ooh, that looks interesting. Natural brown. It's very interesting. I'm going to have to go in harder on that. It happens a lot of times with browns. We'll get our black in there. And I'm hoping that this is black enough for my line work. Huh. Okay. Be a lot of potential with this one. A lot of potential. Sometimes just doing an ink wash on something monochromatic is very nice. Especially in a sketchbook. Okay. I like that. Let's get to painting, and we'll come back at the end and see these when they're dry. Okay, so here I've drawn out in my pencil my rooster. I took this photo when we went with a family outing to a nearby petting zoo um, called Maker's Ranch. Our family is really close friends with Heidi, and this is Heidi's rooster, who I thought was just beautiful. So, I am going, instead of using my dip pen, I am going to try and do my line work with this uh, ink black. Seems to be going on nice and smooth so far. This is kind of cool because the one thing about using a brush to do the line work is you can really get your lines to vary the way you want them to. Anyway, I'm going to speed this up. Go ahead and do the fencing in the micron pen here. Let's 
that dry. So I've got my line work done and I've let it dry for a few hours. And I went ahead and used my kneaded eraser to come in here and erase some of the lines that were like on the edges and stuff. Some of these inner lines I'm not worried about. I'm gonna come in here with some of this color and we'll go over those lines. Even though I've let those dry for a while, okay, I'm not convinced it. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. See, there is some bleeding of that lower level one. So, hmm. Like I said, I've let this dry a few hours, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's just not exactly what I had hoped for. I mean, the color's intense, but the black is not waterproof. It's not. There's a trick on this, just don't let your edge go dry. Much like working with markers or something. And there's some more pleating. Mm. Okay, and it didn't bleed over the micron, but it definitely bleeds over the black ink. So they are not the best for line work. Seem to be layering, glazing, okay. Red. It's red. He's got a red eye. We'll call him Red Eye. I don't know much about roosters. I've never been around them. So I didn't know they had red eyes. It's a very dark blue I've mixed here. So I think I can mix these quite well as far as um, achieving colors that I want. 
Just give it a slight indication of feathers. And the viewer will make sense of that. There's no reason we have to be 100% accurate on these. There's no feathers there. Okay, and here are the final results. Overall, I really like them. I do think they are very intense. I like that there's no granulation, so they're wonderful for print work or scanning and journal work. There's a couple of cons I want to talk about. They don't work well for the line work because they're not waterproof. <laughs> but for washes, I think they're good. The other con is, now I did not look this up myself, but depending on what type of artwork you want to do, they, they're not great on their light fastness rating. So um, I'm sure you could look that up on their website. I'll be linking that down below. Check out this playlist. I want to thank you for joining me today. Until the next one.